Hello, today's subject we're going to use the Arduino microcontroller to operate a DC to AC power inverter. This is a device that you takes 12 or 24 volts from lead acid storage batteries such as this over here and converts it to 120 volts AC. Um, Actually, what we're doing is feeding a transformer, in this case a 24 volt center tap transformer, backwards. We're using it as a step up instead of a step down. The electronic switching is accomplished through these power MOSFETs. These MOSFETs were salvaged from an industrial plasma cutter. They're rated at about 40 amps at 400 volts. You don't really need anywhere near that kind of voltage because we're only working with 12 or 24. You will need the ability to handle the current. This is just simply a 35 watt lamp. This assembly, the wiring running to this small board here, which we will look closer at in a moment, is simply a couple of optocouplers that, op that isolate electrically the 12 volts and the high voltage switching away from the 5 volt microcontroller. In this case it's an Arduino. Uh, the board is from an outfit called Modern Device. Plugs into the side of the board here. Three jumpers into the driver cable and we have an on off power switch. This is a fairly simple demo but I did program one feature into it that I think is sort of unique. I actually got the idea from a commercial unit. When you power this up, you really don't want a huge surge hitting the system. So it's programmed to bring the power up gradually, as we will observe when I flip this switch. Of course, if you see a green LED blinking off there, that's just telling me that the timing is cycling through. It's Again, let's notice how it powers up very gradually. Uh, this particular system, if I added a couple of more power MOSFETs, could handle 400 watts. The idea, of course, is the battery that I'm using is charged by a couple of solar panels. I use it as a backup system because I do live in a rural area. We tend to lose power sometimes, and it's nice to be able to get your lights back on or operate the uh, system in my oil furnace, which is fairly low wattage. No, this system, I've never tried it on anything as heavy as a lot. I've tried it on medium-sized power drills. It works. We shall look in a few minutes when I power up a four-foot dual-tube fluorescent light. But for now, let's take a closer look at our components. Here is a closer look at the Arduino board. This is simply an on-off switch assembly. This is a serial cable for programming. This is a RS-232 to TTL converter, which converts the uh, serial cable signal to a standard TTL level, level signal to program the controller. If you look real close over here, you can see two 4N37 micro optocouplers. The idea of this it's a fair, uh, is that I'm switching one FET on and off at a time. One is on for a half cycle of 8.3 milliseconds, then it's off and then the other alternate MOSFET is on for 8.3 milliseconds. If you look at the timing of a 60 cycle signal it's 16.666 whatever milliseconds I rounded off to 16.67 or so which divides down to about 8.3 milliseconds I actually put it on a frequency counter 
and it measured 60 Hertz. Granted, the output is a square wave, but it doesn't seem to affect anything I've tried on it. It works, it seems, just as well as a standard sine wave. Now, and so that's, I'm not going to guarantee it works on any, anything out there, but it works on lights, it's powered a radio, and some other equipment, and the square waves are clean. They don't have a lot of racket on them. Pictured here is the power MOSFET assembly. If you look real close, I only have two power MOSFETs mounted to this heat sink. Uh, if you really want higher power, you're going to have to parallel them in sets, say, four, six, eight, something like that. These two will handle by themselves well over 100 watts of output. I haven't pushed them that hard, but there don't seem to be a problem with them. The heat sink will get a little warm after a while, but that's normal. Power MOSFETs in these kinds of applications are much superior to bipolar transistors such as the 2N3055. When they switch on, they switch on with very little resistance, maybe uh, as low a fraction of an ohm. And the bonus with these particular type units, uh, they have built-in parasitic diodes, so it will, so that will eliminate any switch, a lot of the switching noise. I can't find any to speak of on an oscilloscope, so it's a good, clean square wave. Now let's see if we can light up a big fluorescent light with this system. Pictured here is the actual Arduino circuit. Not only does it generate the pulses to operate the power MOSFETs, <coughs> but it has the ability through a thermistor to measure the temperature of the MOSFET heat sink. It can automatically switch a fan on and off for cooling. It can even monitor bat battery voltage all in the software. Here's a picture of the actual outputs of the power MOSFETs that we saw earlier. Fairly straightforward, two optocouplers, a couple of MOSFETs, and a transformer, and a few resistors. Here's a different design using an H-bridge setup that delivers true AC through a transformer, and it's using the same 60 Hz square waves that we used before. Okay, now I have attached my uh, inverter circuit to the overhead light on my workbench. Uh, the background light in here, of course, as you can see from the video, is not very bright. I'm going to go ahead and switch the backlight off completely, and then we'll power up the fluorescent light above the bench with the uh, inverter. And yes, it's quite dark in here, but let's have some light. Yes, it works. Like I said, this works fine at the with this what this has if it has a solid state ballast. There it seems to have some problems with a cast the old cast iron type ballast but those are obsolete and are going to the metal masher anyway. But this gets the point through that one could use something like this to power some tools or a lighting system. But the most of the idea here was to show what some simple electronics can do. So the next part of this we will be looking at a schematic of a brief schematic of a system or you can see the entire schematic programming at all at my website www.bristolwatch.com Thanks for viewing the video and have a nice day.